Have you ever been honestly hungry? So hungry that when you looked across the room, you could smell and taste someone, what they were eating. You knew. I've been that hungry. Growing up, we had a few rough years. And so during that time, I lived in HUD housing. And there were times when people would come and bring us stuff. And there was this time where I would always reflect to the happy truck. You may wonder, what is the happy truck? Well, the happy truck in my community was the commodities truck. The commodities truck brought us cheese, milk, and sugar. You may think, well, what's so special about that? Well, it's pretty darn special when you didn't have any extras. So this allowed us to have just a little extra. There were some very valuable lessons I learned while I was there. And those lessons were such as this one. Prior to living in HUD housing, I worked in my grandmother's greenhouse. And I would often do my family chores. And my chores consisted of picking bugs and plants and other things. Well, during that time, in my little kid way, what I would do is I would go to the creek that was right next to the greenhouse, and I would gather minnows. And this day, I gathered minnows, and I brought them into the greenhouse. And I took the minnows to the water, and I dropped them in, and they all started vanishing. And I wondered, and I said aloud, Granny, hey, they're magic. And she came over in her granny way and said, now you know better. You know that there shouldn't be anything put in those chemical tanks. Ironically, today you could actually put stuff in my tanks, nothing would dissolve. A few years ago, fast forward, say 20 years, while working at Mayport Coastal Sciences Middle School, I had the opportunity to meet a family who would change my life and the lives of others. The Blottos had bought land in Hilliard, and when they bought that land, they bought some chicken houses. Well, what you may not know is, is about 12 years ago, Tyson Chicken pulled out of Nassau County. It decimated the community. 389 barns overnight, within a week's time, shuttered. And it left the community decimated. The Blottos had a vision to help the Hilliard community turn chicken houses back to work. Work is good stuff in a community, rural community. You don't have to drive 40 miles. You can just walk across the field and go to work. That's good. So the, the, as the Blottos were exploring this, I was in on the conversation, and I suggested, what about aquaponics? Aquaponics, they said. Yeah, we can take these fish and do some amazing things. So this aquaponics word, you may be wondering, what is it? Well, aquaponics is the merging of two worlds, aquaculture and hydroponics. It is a symbiotic relationship which results in the best from both. The fish provide optimum nutrition for the plants, and the plants clean the water for the fish. So, okay, that's nice, right? So what's so special about this? Well, what we were able to find at Trader Hill Farms was that we were able to do a few things different than anyone else. First thing, we developed Trader Hill Farms to be kind of the way that we, our logo, our, our trademark. But what we found during that time was there was a greater need. There was a need for sustainable farming information. No one in our community was doing it. So we developed the Center for Sustainable Agricultural Excellence and Conservation. During that time, the center is now the research arm and the nonprofit arm of Traders Hill Farms in so many ways. What we were able to find was I'm actually able to grow more in a smaller spot. In that barn that's only 14,400 square feet, I can put 32,500 plants. That's the linear equivalent of five miles of rows. Ask any farmer about that, and you'll know that's pretty substantial. In our barn, we have a 3,000 and a 6,000 square foot system. So what, what else? Well, I'm actually able to take from a seed to a mature green 30 days. Nothing gmo nothing hocus pocus, simply nature as it's supposed to be. We are able to harvest those vegetables, and actually, interestingly enough, I can turn my barn if I have an order in 30 days. That's pretty powerful. So I can farm more in a smaller spot, I can grow it faster. This is what a mature green would look like. 
you may say to me, okay, that's nice. All right. But do you know my lettuce lasts longer? It lasts, we documented it to last more than two weeks. We know that it lasts two weeks. I've kept it in my refrigerator up to six. So we have another win. We also, the lettuce tastes better. We find that all of our vegetables, because we don't add chemicals, we don't use pesticides, we don't use any of the stuff that you hear about. Our vegetables are as nature made it. So we grow more in a smaller spot, we grow it faster, it lasts longer, and it tastes better. Okay, what else? Well, in my system, it only requires two pumps. You may say to me, oh, I'm not a farmer, I don't get it. That's pretty substantial. When I was a ground farmer, what I did was I used a pump for every machine and every time I turned my soil and every time I planted my soil, I used two. So I'm in low, long range, low cost system. So I can actually save money, grow faster, it's quicker, there's a whole bunch of wins. Well, there may be a businessman in the crowd and you say to me, huh, how can you make money? Well, there's four ways of making money. We have our fish. We have our produce, we have our sludge, and we have our emulsion. Eh, what's a sludge, Angela? Well, it's an emulsion. Well, in our farm, sludge, especially known as fish poo. When were you able to sell some poo? So, in our situation, every day, we have a rigorous maintenance program. And in that rigorous maintenance program, we actually have our water exchanges. If we need to... Um, chase pH or have a pH issue, which we really don't ever have, we take water from the well or for our, from our rain barrels. It's a very simple situation. So I don't really add any chemicals. But part of that situation, the maintenance program, is, is that I emit this emulsion every day. And so some days I don't have it sold. So we have, at every aquaponics farm that we build, we put a seasonal garden. So we grow in our seasonal gardens a variety of things things that people say we shouldn't be able to grow, and we're actually able to grow them longer. So we take that emulsion and pour it directly on the roots, and we get some amazing, amazing vegetables. So we have, you have these four ways of making money. The last one, sludge. Sludge is actually my favorite thing to talk about. It's concentrated sludge. It's just what you imagine it to be. Thick, hearty, stinky, yucky. If you hang out in Jacksonville, you've probably seen some amazing plantings. So you say, who buys sludge? Well, landscape architects know the value of it. If you've ever been to any of the, some of the plantings that they've done, I can tell you firsthand, their plantings are more amazing than anyone else's. All right, so grow faster, last longer, more in a smaller spot, taste better. It's a long range, low cost system. It's a win, right? So I hope you will join me as I put local people to work growing local produce, consumed locally, that lasts longer. My five-year vision is, in five years, we'll have aquaponics facilities within 50 miles of every urban hub, and we will be able to change the hunger landscape with a sustainable farming technique that we can all participate in. Thank you.